Researchers and medical experts have teamed up to develop a policy brief on the viability and safety concerns of GMO foods in the wake of widespread misconception about its safety. Representatives from the Kenya Medical Association, together with the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union, say that this is the beginning of a journey to separate facts from fiction, adding that Kenyans' concerns about the introduction of these foods will be addressed in a policy document expected to be concluded in the next two months. The move comes after President William Ruto in October last year lifted the ban on cultivation and importation of genetically modified crops that have been in place for over 10 years amid the worst drought in 40 years and soaring food prices. However, the executive order sparked mixed reactions with those opposed to lifting the ban citing health and safety issues and even seeking legal redress to stop the process which was to begin this month. Kenya Medical Association CEO Dr. Brenda Obondo. Well, research takes some time, but what we are going to guide with what already we have, the data that we have in the country, is what is going to guide the policy brief, right? The policy statement. And that from that policy statement, there are a number of also recommendations that we are hoping. And in fact, we are going to even throw us a challenge to Nakosti to even support this multidisciplinary team to invest in this research, either if you are doing a longitudinal study or we're doing a retrospective study to actually look for those correlations and associations. The team resolved to ventilate on various health concerns raised around GMOs and, and possibly calm Kenyans' fears before drafting a policy statement for public information based on research and evidence that is currently available. We are not politicians and neither are we students of politics. And therefore we, are, we believe in science because medicine, healthcare is scientific. And science is based on facts and evidence. If you listen to the right voices, there's nothing wrong with the GMO technology as it is right now. If at any given point we'll encounter something that will not be good for our people and for us, we are also not afraid because we're not being funded by any biotech company. We are here on our own volition to reassure the public and to say that prayer is good, but prayer with science behind it. According to Dr. Joel Ocheng, Kenyans have been led to believe that GMO technology has been imported and hence the resistance. He added that with the BT maize release, production is expected to go up from the current 2.8 million metric tons against the consumption of 4 million metric tons and therefore the deficit of 1.2 million metric tons which the country imports. When the BT maize goes to the farmers, the production levels will go up because it uh, restores yield that is normally derived by the pest, the stem borer. So we look at this problem as temporary, and once we are allowed to deploy it in the farms, we are sure that part of food security will be improved. Professor Richard Oduor from Kenya University and Council Member of Cubico assured Kenyans that for the last 18 years, research on GMO has been carried out by government critical institutions and therefore the public should know they would never be harmed in any way. As a result, we need the public to know that we are also Kenyans and we live in this country and we have no intentions of harming, harming them. So from where I sit, I'm very happy that the data is here. Come ask those queries. We will be able, and if there is any concern that requires more research, we will be available to do this research. The members say that they respect the court processes and are hoping that they will be vindicated since the scientific evidence available has shown that there is no single safety concern about BT products or crops. GMO crops have been used world over and among the countries that have been producing GM crops include the USA, Brazil, Argentina, India and Canada and are also the largest users currently in Africa, South Africa, Burkina Faso, Egypt and Sudan are also growing GM foods. For KTN Farmers TV, I'm Paul Thiongo.